Well, hello there, West Virginia. You know what I said last week? I said West Virginia will likely not beat TCU. There's a really good chance TCU wins this game, but one of my locks of the week was West Virginia plus 14. I thought there was no way West Virginia doesn't at least keep this game close with C.J. Donaldson, even if Nico Markiel was the starting quarterback. I thought this West Virginia offense with its running game can at least make it interesting. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something. I am still, still riding the West Virginia train, but for different reasons. This defense, I'm going to say it, is the best defense in the entire Big 12. It's the best defense in the Big 12 right now. If you look at the body of work of what West Virginia is doing right now, they are putting opposing teams in blenders. It's a TCU offense. I have seen Chandler Morris throw over 500 yards with my own eyes. And TCU shut him down. He looked lost. The final drive where he's supposed to go and, and try to you know find a way to win this game for his team and be the hero. Everybody's expecting, all right, TCU. You know, they were still West Virginia, 24-21, plus points. A couple of times down there, right, where TCU has the ball, down by three, opportunity to tie it, opportunity to take the lead. And we start thinking, all right, West Virginia is plus 120. Should I take it? Or should I take TCU minus 120, right? The, the obvious thing is the TCU is going to march down and they're going to take the lead. Vegas even like TCU down the stretch. It's a West Virginia team that held Duquesne to 17 points. You say held. It's like, oh, wow. 17 to Duquesne. You know, you should be, teams like that should be scoring 10 on you, maybe. Well, then Nico Markiel only threw for 60 yards, but West Virginia held Pittsburgh to six points. You thought, okay, that's a much better defensive performance. This is where West Virginia is leaning on the rushing game of the defense. How, how about long drives? How about drawn out drives and defense? And when that became the identity, it felt like that with the, the Pittsburgh game. It said, okay, we don't need Garrett Green to go throw for 250 yards. We don't need anybody to do that. We can do just enough in the run game. We can, we can extend drives, but lean on defense. We can be the Iowa of the Big 12. It's not always going to be entertaining. It's not always going to be fun. But if you like sacks, if you like great play inside the box, then you're going to like West Virginia. That's the identity the Mountaineers took over with Neil Brown. 17-6 to six final score against Pittsburgh. 20-13 to 13 against Texas Tech. What are you noticing here? Low scoring defensive battles. TCU, 24-21. You held the Horned Frogs to 21 points this week. The Sunny Dykes, high-powered, old SMU offenses, 21 points in a win against the Horned Frogs. I watched a majority of this game because I had stake in it. I told you that one of my locks of the week was to take West Virginia plus 14. I really thought West Virginia was going to put up at least a fight. You go into halftime at 21 to 14, you think, okay, West Virginia is down. How will this team respond? Because allowing 21 points in the first half for West Virginia is something abnormal. Right? We're not really used to that. It's like, all right, geez, this defense is supposed to be so good that this shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't already be 21 points on the board for TCU. But then, what do you say not only West Virginia pitches a shutout in the second half, but if you watch the game the way they did it, what, what I'm saying, if you're a fan of another team, if you're a fan of a BYU, if you're a fan of a, of a Baylor or of a TCU, you're a fan of Oklahoma State, even if you play, if you play West Virginia or you don't, I want you to know, this might be the best defense in the entire Big 12. And right now, they make a strong case for the answer to that to be a, uh, the answer of whether they are or not to be yes. TCU offensively was not god awful, right? They're, they're, they're not a bad team in general. 433 total yards, 23 first downs. But the big thing here is timely play. That's something that I've started to notice. BYU is kind of the spark for this on Fridays. Who, who, who is the best defensively on third down? Because TCU was six for 16, one for two on fourth down. And when it felt like the, the third downs were the biggest, the fourth downs were the biggest late in the game, right? Where, where TCU's offense was fine in the first half, obviously. But when things matter the most, West Virginia stepped up. The Horn Frogs this year have not wanted to run the ball for 250 yards. They, they want to throw the ball at Chandler Morris. He's held under 300 yards passing. TCU, TCU under 150 yards rushing. 38 carries. 3.6 yards per rush. That's shut down. Now, by the end of this game, we are forcing, we being West Virginia, 
forcing TCU to throw the football. When you know TCU is going to throw the football, you can key in on it. And that's exactly what the Mountaineers did. I'm watching this game. I was at a bar here in Orlando after the Baylor-UCF game thinking, all right, the defense has been good in the second half, but is there any way it can sustain in the biggest drives? I just watched Duke and Notre Dame. Notre Dame going and scoring on that final drive. It's like it's the script in college football that the, the final drive, that team's going to score, they're going to win the game. Not on West Virginia. Zero points for TCU in the second half. And the more I watch this Neil Brown team, the more I think, what if Neil Brown's secretly a genius? Did he lose a lot of games early on in his West Virginia career just to build this underdog mentality, just to build this, oh, you want to fire me? You want to put our team at last in the Big 12? And then to come out this year with that offensive line, with C.J. Donaldson carrying the rock, even in a week where C.J. Donaldson wasn't a world beater, with Garrett Green running the rock more than C.J. Donaldson, better than C.J. Donaldson, more efficiently than C.J. Donaldson. This is where Neil Brown looks around the conference and says, hey, I told you I wasn't going to be last. And not only was I not going to be last, there's a realm in which I go 10 and 2. There's a realm in which I go 9 and 3. I'm looking at this West Virginia team, and it's scary now. The team that I once had at 1 and 11 will win against Houston on the road. That's not a question. You get a bye week going into Houston. That's a win. Oklahoma State's not good. That's a win. UCF just lost to Baylor. That's a win. BYU at home. I think West Virginia, having seen BYU play, is the more physical team. That right now, right now, as of today, is a win for West Virginia. Oklahoma on the road. We'll call it a loss because it it very well should be, could be. Cincinnati at home, that's a win. Baylor on the road, that's a win. I mean, look, Cincinnati is legitimately staring down the barrel of 9-3, and 10-2. and two. And Neil Brown, what are we talking buyouts for? He's the coach of the West Virginia Mountaineers. And I guess he will be for a while. He is pulling a fast one on all of college football, especially on me here at Lockdown Big 12, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.